My name is Vega Holmedal, and I work in the Center for Tax Policy and Administration, the OECD. Uh, later in the session, we're also going to hear from uh, my, my, one of my colleagues, Oliver Petzold, and the lovely faces you're seeing on screen, hopefully at the moment, at least I see them, is uh, Mary Vajne, uh, who will be leading the panel discussion. Uh, Hank Williams, uh, from, uh, sorry, Mary is from ETA. Hank Williams from uh, Jamaica, and uh, Darshi Kinklatse from Georgia. So we'll hear more from these uh, three people later in uh, the session. And now I'm going to <laughs> attempt to start my PowerPoint presentation and see if everything crashes again. Uh, but uh, let's hope that it works. Uh, so I'm just um, sharing to start sharing my screen. And if one of you that uh, uh, one of you can unmute and tell me if you see it, that would be wonderful. We can see it. It's perfect. Thank you very much. Excellent. We are off. Oh, wonderful. Uh, the content of today's session is a brief uh, presentation of the report that is kind of the basis for this uh, session um, that was uh, uh, or that was published in December uh, 21. And then we're going to have uh, the panel discussion led by Mary Vaina, and uh, she is the director of tax programs in ATAF. Uh, and uh, you have also met the two panel participants, uh, Dachi and uh, Hang. And we welcome comments and questions in the chat anytime throughout the session, uh, but uh, I will have a look at the chat uh, after I have uh, done the introductory remarks and the presentation of the report. So if you're wondering why I'm not taking your uh, questions and comments, Immediately, that might be the reason. Uh, we will then uh, um, have a time to look at uh, uh, the questions and comments after the panel discussion and before we have a few other topics of other OS OECD FDA resources that we'd like to focus on. The purpose of the session is to look at aspects of capacity building related to digitalization. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's uh, based on this report that I just mentioned. And we want to focus specifically on sharing experience between administrations, both because that was a focal point of the report, but also because that is uh, part of the background for the panel discussion that we're going to uh, enjoy a bit later. Maybe some of you are not that familiar with the Forum on Tax Administration, so I'll briefly mention it now. Uh, the, uh, Oliver and I both work for the FTA Secretariat, uh, and the vision of the Forum on Tax Administration is to help commissioners identify, discuss, and influence uh, relevant global trends, and to help develop new ideas so we can increase fairness, efficiency, and effectiveness of tax administration, and uh, help remove or reduce uh, tax burdens, and of course, to improve tax compliance and tax certainty. The uh, slides will be available after the presentation, as you probably know. So if you're interested in uh, these uh, details, you'll have access to them. Now, the report that uh, I'm talking about, one of the focus areas of FTA is capacity building that uh, helps developing country tax administrations. And so we uh, have uh, delivered this report, which specifically uh, serves that purpose in the area of uh, digitalization. And a key purpose of the report is to share the experience of tax administrations and organizations across the world. We hope and believe that this can inspire and motivate administrations to undertake digitalization projects and that the report can provide some guidance for that process. We also hope that the examples of digitalization areas and topics in the report can 
assist administrations as they shape and execute their digitalization strategies. The approximately 150 page report is organized into three parts uh, so that uh, each of these to a certain extent can be read independently of the others. And this page summarizes the content of each part. I'm not going to read out everything here, but you realize that uh, we, uh, we uh, target specifically both commissioners and other in top management that need to build a case for digitalization and also the managers, project managers and teams that are planning and executing digitalization projects. We believe that uh, these areas are critical to effective digitalization projects. Before I give the floor to the panelists and in order to, um, sorry, and the key message, of course, here is about uh, uh, sharing experience because uh, learning about other tax administrations' experience may help provide different perspectives and challenge the ways that we're thinking. But before I go on to uh, the panelists, I want to mention the definitions of digitalization and digital transformation that have been used uh, so far in this process. Uh, because we do distinguish between them. And digitalization of tax administration, uh, we understand to be converting data into digital formats and converting manual processes into processes that are either supported or performed by computers. In many cases, uh, a, pro a process will not be taken over by the computers, but it will be made much more efficient and effective by the use of computers. In other cases, with, for instance, uh, robotic process automation, uh, the computer will actually take over the whole uh, process, even case handling in some unique cases. Digital transformation, on the other hand, there we're talking about moving taxation into the natural systems of taxpayers. And by natural systems, we're talking about the systems that taxpayers use to perform their business, to execute transactions, and to communicate. Uh, we believe that by building compliance into the natural systems and moving taxation as close to the taxable events as possible, uh, administrations can increase compliance and reduce taxpayer burdens. So both these elements are important steps uh, towards making taxation seamless and effortless for taxpayers. And now it's time for me to stop sharing and uh, uh, turn, uh, uh, give the floor to uh, Mary, Dachi and uh, Hank. So Mary, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Viva. Good afternoon, everyone. And it's uh, my pleasure to be part of this uh, discussion. I will be uh, moderating the discussion and uh, the main panelists, uh, uh, like Vera has uh, said, will be two, but uh, I'll come to that uh, uh, in a short while. I want to say that um, this really is, uh, is an exciting discussion because, and I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to the session, uh, because uh, it really affords us an opportunity to share experiences on digitalization of tax administrations and how this improves uh, what we do. Uh, the successes met, the challenges that have been uh, met and the opportunities that can be exploited will be part of what will be discussed in the next few minutes. And we hope it can come through uh, by the interventions that will be made by our very able panelists. The first, panelist being Dachi from the Georgia Revenue Administration. Dachi, I consciously didn't pronounce your second name because I didn't want to murder it. And the second panelist will be Hank Williams, who is from the, who is the Deputy Commissioner General in Jamaica. Now, um, we all know that, especially during this COVID-19 period, one of the 
key observations across the board is that for the tax administrations that were able to, that were, that were digitalized, these were, I wouldn't say they weren't affected, but at least they were able to go on with operations. So digitalization was really part, uh, was seen as, part, uh, as a, a key element in providing business continuity. And so um, we will hear from our panelists. I would encourage everybody to post whatever queries they have in the chat or whatever ideas. So we all agree that digitalization is really the way to go. And I hope that this discussion will even bring it to another level and that uh, most of you have looked at the report and will also be able to contribute. So without further ado, I want to call on you, uh, Dachi. I'll pose a question to each of you and then give you an opportunity to respond. And I'll start with you, Dachi. Dachi, uh, if you could kindly share your thoughts on the presentation that we so kindly uh, just made. And if you look at the report, it refers to many successes and uh, many, many lessons learned from tax administrations. And I know that uh, Georgia did uh, participate and lessons learned indeed. So according to your experiences, what are the important success factors for digitalization in a developing country context? Over to you, Dachi. Thank you, Mary, for a very great introduction. Uh, indeed, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate FTA and also all other countries for, for delivering such a fascinating report, which uh, not only shares ex experience uh, uh, about uh, success stories, uh, um, uh, lesser learned challenges, but also inspire may 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 inspire other countries uh, that uh, uh, with the dedication of proper planning, a breakthrough in, uh, results can be achieved. Uh, as uh, for for the question concerning the uh, Georgia's experience in terms of digitalization and key factors in this uh, way, I would I would. Um, like to mention several of them. First of all, uh, I would like to uh, mention that it is uh, key to have the uh, governmental uh, support in this journey because it is uh, uh, this, this uh, include change management issues, uh, issues with interaction with other governmental agencies. It also includes the policy uh, decision and uh, farm motivation to make the digitalization and. Uh, governmental support behind is uh, one of the key elements uh, in big digital transformation uh, journey. The second uh, issue which I should would like to stress uh, is the proper communication. Uh, when I mention communication, I mean the communication within tax administration with tax officials to uh, also in order to explain that uh, uh, this is a very important step for for. Um, uh, modernization of tax administration, which makes the um, administration more efficient, helps a tax administration to generate more revenue. But also at the same time, the communication with uh, taxpayers uh, that and explaining that it's not only helps helps tax administration to be more ef effective and efficient, but it also re uh, re reduces taxpayers' burdens and is their uh, compliance. And uh, the third. Uh, uh, factor I would uh, like to mention is uh, especially in the context of the developing countries that if this uh, two mentioned factor is combined with uh, tailored uh, technical assistance, both expert wise and investor wise, it really will make this uh, transformation quicker, more sustainable uh, and more coherent. Um, uh, this is what I want, would, would like to share about this uh, Georgia's experience in terms of digitalization uh, and in terms of the key factor, which is driving the digitalization journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dachi, uh, for those uh, very interesting remarks. And um, indeed, uh, it's interesting uh, the way you put it, how digitalization may actually increase uh, compliance because of the, the gains made in terms of efficiency and uh, therefore much easier for the, for the taxpayer. And uh, of course, uh, you also mentioned the need for government support and how this is really crucial in terms of, uh, of getting it right. And uh, the fact that of course, uh, communication is crucial even within the, 
the revenue administration it as a way of managing the, the change. Thank you very much, Dachi. And I'll come back to you if time allows. Let me go to you, Hank. Hank, if you can also please share your thoughts in regards to the presentation. And then uh, also uh, my follow-up question is, digitalization seems to be on everyone's agenda, both in the public and private sectors, as well as in the market. That said, and based on your experience, how does peer-to-peer -peer assistance fit into the big picture of uh, assistance offering? Any areas that you would be particularly useful in your opinion? Uh, I would like to hear from you, Hank, and I'm sure everybody else is waiting. Over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mary. And let me also join my colleague in expressing thanks on behalf of the Tax and Institution Jamaica and the Extension, the government, for the opportunity to participate in this forum, and most important, to be able to contribute to the report. It has been a very excellent report. I believe that it also sets the, the, the foundation for tax administrations to benefit across the world, as well as the members of the private sector can also benefit from the, the report that has been prepared. In terms of our experience in Jamaica, we have had a very interesting and, and very exciting journey. And it started from way back as in 2014, 15, when the government of Jamaica saw it as a strategic priority for us to look at modernizing tax administration. And central to that was the implementation of a new system, revenue administration system, which allowed us to digitize our processes and this came against the background that there was a there was a key deficit in our tax administration system where we need to simplify our operations. There was need for transparency and also to maintain re revenue ad um, advocate, um, adequacy. Central to that, what we have recognized is that with that support at the level of government, we have been able to successfully implement the system. We have also been able to transform the organization in such a way where we have basically implemented a new management structure, where we now have a board of management. We also have within the system employees who are so trained because the system had allowed for us to, to close the, de the deficit that exists within in terms of capacity building. And again, when we look back at the report, the report has said, has said clearly that training is critical to the digitization process. And it's also critical to me the challenges that we face. So in terms of digitization, for us, it has been very good because it has allowed us to focus on our scope and our relevance. And I believe that that is something that, that tax administration can take away in terms of ensuring that the digitization process, that the people is at the central, the center of it, and also deals with the relevance in which your tax administration operates and the challenges that you have for us in Jamaica, the transition was critical too because we had to change our job or job, the job functions change in Jamaica, as well as we have to, we actually had to do a change management program that allowed persons to be to be moved into critical parts in terms of their strengths. So I must say that in terms of what we have learned, and I think that's something that we we can we can put forward as as organization can take. We have seen it as it has created a path for learning and growth environment. And also in terms of our talent management program has been advanced, but central to having digitization, there must be a strategy to deal with your ICT infrastructure. And what we have done is that we have created an ICT plan, investment plan, which allows us to look in a strategic way at how is it that we are going to refresh our ICT infrastructure. So in terms of reports, it's in line with our direction and we, are, we have seen it as a template on which we can further advance the tax administration. In terms of the matter of peer-to-peer, -peer, we believe that this is an excellent initiative. And why I say that is because Jamaica has been beneficiary to this. Jamaica has, as in its state of a developing country, has benefited from the support of Canada to which we are peered. We have had in support in terms of the tax, the tax, the, the tax inspectors or border program has been very central to that. That allowed for the training of our auditors in terms of capacity building. 
but also helped us in terms of our exchange of information program. And we would have had, from a tax administration standpoint, a technical briefing with ETA, which would have, would have put us in a direction where we can move forward in terms of the BEPS pillar one and pillar two um, um, expectations of tax administration. So we have got benefited a lot from that and what we have learned, especially with the, inter in, with the preliminary discussion that we have had with ATAF, with the support of ATAF, is that there is need for us to have a formal engagement that we can help us in terms of meeting our goals on our BEPS and also to help us to the exchange of information as we are building out IC infrastructure to, to ensure that we are fully compliant. We also believe that there is room for change in regards to VAT because the, with the digital economy that we have now, which we cannot separate again from our, how we function, is that there will have to be a strength of capacity in terms of allowing persons to understand how is it that we can be able to audit as well as do compliance activity. And that's something that we are seen as critical also. We believe that there is also the opportunity for support with regards to statistics, data statistics, and in terms of data mining, there's also support that could be realized in terms of anti-money laundering and by extension, financial investigation for terrorism. So we believe that there's a lot there to be done to help us to strengthen, especially risk management capacity, which in our initial system, we had put, in fact, we had put the, the mechanism in place to allow for us to do effective risk modeling as also enforcement as well as compliance activity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hank. That is um, <clears throat> a very, very comprehensive, you know, um, sharing. And it's uh, it's interesting how you've been able to, to benefit from a number of areas. And it was interesting to hear that, <clears throat> excuse me, you even had changed your, you got a whole new management structure. It's interesting that that, that happened. Maybe you have an opportunity to share uh, on that a little more. And uh, the fact that, um, you had a clear investment plan. And I want to come back to that, Hank, because one of the challenges that the tax administrations have uh, indicated is that um, much as it's uh, really um, everybody's desire to have this, um, that to, to digitalize the tax administration, one of the key challenges is really the finances. How are you able to, to get that? And then, um, um, in terms of the whole of government approach, have the other departments of government that you, uh, that you deal with uh, also digitalized? And if not, is, is a, isn't that a bit of a hindrance? Uh, back to you, Han. Thank you very much, Mary. In terms of the, the, the investment in the system, we got that support from the International Development, Inter-American Development Bank, which have provided initial support for us to, to put the system in place. Critically to, to the investment in the system, that we had to ensure that we have maintenance of it because one of the deficits sometimes in, in public administrations is that we forget to, to put the, the systems in place for maintenance. So we have under the, the, the program that we have developed to have the system in place, a maintenance arrangement with our developers and that is something that is fully in place. We have refreshing of the system on a regular basis. So in terms of the, the maintenance, that becomes a part of our, our budget, or our, our budget that we get from the Ministry of Finance. And also the support to the system is provided by the agency of government, which facilitates the whole of government approach in terms of management of systems. And why I, I allude to that is because currently, the government of Jamaica is putting in place a national identification system, which would allow for governments of the government entities to be able to have an interconnectivity. That in of itself, for us, we see it as a great opportunity because centrally the tax registration number, which the tax administration Jamaica now use, that is a template on which the government of Jamaica has seen to build to build out a national identification system. So again, tax administration is leading the way. Critically to that, in terms of our whole of government approach, even prior to, to taking that step, we have the system so designed where we're able to interface with government agencies, 
We're able to provide validation services for them in terms of identification, in terms of other critical areas and natures around persons and entities. And we have also been able, based on how the system is, is structured, to help us with our compliance activities, which is central, because we are able to get third party information. And that third party inf information is used to develop our programs and allow us to be able, since we have implemented that system, to be able to meet our revenue target. And I pause here because that has helped us to meet our revenue target. It has also helped us in terms of being able to have mandatory e-filing and we have seen the benefits of it. So my take on it in terms of how we would have seen it is that important that the investments be done, but we must ensure that as government would have given its commitment to our system, that we must ensure that the support is given from the budget as well as there has to be an all of government approach in terms of data sharing and in terms of transitioning and transforming the or in respective countries. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Hank. And that is extremely interesting, especially the, the third party uh, information that you're now getting. I'm sure that is that goes, I mean, it's always a, a dream of every taxman that you can get this third party information. So it's great that that is uh, getting better as you digitalize. Uh, back to you, Dachi. Um, Sam, um, in the, in the, you, you, you talked about the different gains that uh, you have experienced in, uh, in Georgia. And I want to pose the same question to you. When you have digitalized as a revenue administration, I wanted to know uh, in terms of uh, a whole of government approach and in terms of how you uh, relate with other government departments, how is that going? Are they equally digitalized? And um, secondly, um, I wanted to know also that if you look at the, uh, even at the level of the tax administration and in terms of your reporting and in terms of the, uh, of the information collection, how has this, has this improved? Is there some information that you can share with, uh, with the audience? Thank you. Uh, okay, so, so, thank you, Mary. Uh, so I will uh, divide these questions into parts. As for the governmental approach and uh, the level of, um, uh, the level of uh, digitalization, uh, I, I, would, I, would, I would say that uh, uh, tax administration is one of the, uh, one of the, uh, top performing in this uh, in this regard as uh, our, we have our interaction digitalized within tax administration uh, starting from uh, uh, registration filing uh, uh, reporting uh, invoicing and uh, and so on and uh, i would say that uh, uh, tax administration uh, even uh, in some in some part was one of the driver also for other governmental organization uh, to, to digitalize. And of course, it's sometimes very challenging when uh, in countries you have different administration with a different uh, uh, level of digitalization because it makes, uh, for example, information exchange harder, uh, also harder to access third party information, which is uh, retained in other government governmental uh, uh, gover governmental uh, uh, agencies, but so we try to um, set a tone when it comes to uh, di di digitalization and uh, uh, digitalize as much as possible when it comes to uh, uh, information sharing uh, with third parties and also when it comes to interaction with uh, um, a taxpayer, for, for example, uh, it, will it be cash registers, will it be uh, VAT invoice, invoices, will it be uh, electronic or web bills? Will it be if, if filing? So um, our, our desire uh, is to have as much uh, function digitalized as, as uh, possible as we do. We, we do believe that it uh, really helps uh, uh, more effective tax administration and uh, also uh, it also helps uh, increase and have a big say in increasing also tax compliance and voluntary uh, compliance. And now I, I would like to uh, make one example. For example, uh, uh, from, from the last year, we 
um, we enacted a fully automatic VAT refund system, which uh, is fully automatic. And uh, of course, uh, the fact that we had this uh, all VAT invoicing, electronic uh, customs declarations, electronic uh, the, uh, the ability to matching uh, tax data, custom data, invo invoices that data helped us a lot uh, in uh, building this system. So, uh, uh, so it is one, uh, one more example that it not only helps tax administration, but it is also very helpful for also tax payer. We who can now get the quicker access to their uh, VAT. So uh, I would I would say that uh, uh, digitalization is uh, really key, and uh, Georgian tax administration uh, uh, is putting special emphasis uh, to, 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 to digitalize as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dachi. Uh, there is a question in the chat from Christian, and uh, I'm going to pose it to uh, both of you. You can respond to it in just two minutes. How can you go about digitizing information when working in an informal market in developing countries? You can start, Dachi, and then Hank will also respond. Thank you. Uh, OK. Actually, uh... Uh, actually, the digitalization. Uh, one of the aim of digitalization is also to uh, uh, also to influence on uh, shadow uh, economy. For example, from Georgian uh, uh, pers uh, pers perspectives, uh, the, for, for example, the uh, enacting of the cash registers, uh, which uh, digital cash register was one of the uh, one, of, one of the inst instrument to. Uh, influence on uh, uh, informal uh, informal economic make make making it uh, um, mandatory. Uh, so also, the, uh, uh, the pro project concerning electronic variables also was uh, uh, ta targeted to to the uh, informal uh, economy. So I do understand that, of course, it's uh, very di uh, very dif uh, di uh, difficult to include the uh, informal sector in the tax administration, but uh, we do believe that uh, digitalization is one, one of these tools for one, for uh, uh, one direction to uh, uh, make control of the informal econo economy. We are, for example, uh, digitalizing uh, uh, transactions between uh, transactions and getting information about the transaction and on the on the other hand it's also is informal economy to uh, to to comply uh, to interact with uh, tax administration and uh, this uh, this two side of the decision which i uh, also mentioned is also works in case of the informal informal uh, informal economy so i would say that uh, the one thing is uh, to offer uh, to informal economic uh, uh, environment where it's easier to comply, and to the other hand, uh, to uh, establish the tools, the digital tools, in order to better uh, manage risks and control the uh, informal economy. So, thank you, thank you. I guess for the developing world, it's also the infrastructure uh, that. Uh, that is a bit of a problem. Yeah, but let's hear from you, Hank, in two minutes, because there are more questions in the chat that I'd like you to respond to. That Thank one. you very much. Thank Christian for that question. Jamaica, like other developing countries, do struggle in informality. Uh, uh, the, informal, the informal economy is, is a very large one. Also in terms of the strategy that we have talked about so far and some of what we have put in place, in terms of the electronic invoice system for VAT, that, that's something that we're exploring now to see how is it that we can, as Georgia, put in place a system where we can get information from cash registers and other points of, of, um, of transactions. Also, we believe that informality is a, is a matter that has to be understood from a behavioral standpoint. And what we are putting in place is a study that we can do to understand what are some things that drive the informal economy. And that will help us in terms of to have a, a plan of action for them. Also, currently now we have a team that goes out from the enforcement side, investigation side, which help us also to identify 
instances of informality. So basically those are the approaches that we use, but we do agree that we have to take an approach where we understand the, the sector, as well as to put mechanisms in place, especially for main direct taxes to assist with this. And I think those are some things I want to highlight now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hank. Another question to both of you. How do you prepare the digital transformation from taxpayers' side? How do you educate the taxpayers? What challenges you face? And uh, I guess um, this is this actually cuts uh, across uh, developing countries. One of the challenges is that taxpayers, well, you digitalize the tax administration, but you can't control the other side. So if the two of you can respond in a minute, I would be most obliged. Hank, and then Dachi. Yes, thank you very much. That again is critical for us, the internal digitization. We place our taxpayers at the center of it. So again, critically, there was communication. We have also allowed for us to have sessions with the taxpayers in turn to, to, show, to basically show them the benefits of, of being able to benefit from the, from the digital transformation in terms of the services that they would have to come to the office to do that will take days to do, for example, a tax compliance certificate and other services that they could do that in real time. We also show them that they could also be transparency, that they could be able to get their balances in real time and also allow for them to be able to ease of doing business, especially now within COVID, persons are fearful for coming to the office and we provide the support even through our call center in terms of our customer care center that persons are able to utilize the digital and we also train those persons. Again, training was also critical and we had sessions with key stakeholders. So those were the major drivers of the, of the digital transformation on our side. Thank you. Extremely interesting. And Dachi? Uh, uh, it's actually a very good question uh, and for developing uh, country perspective, especially uh, because, for example, Georgia is a country where is uh, where is there is still mentality that uh, uh, paying taxes is not very good and everybody trying to uh, to avoid it. And of course, uh, first of all, for to educate educate to them, it's very and extremely 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 important in order to. Uh, boost this uh, uh, voluntary compliance and uh, how we sub support uh, them to digital digitalize. It was a question, and here uh, I, I guess that the, one of the, the driver from, from our side is that uh, we do offer services, uh, service centers offer services, and usually we pro promote uh, them to use electronic services by, for example, having the a lesser fee if they uh, choose uh, to interact uh, elect elect electronically to uh, 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 to file electronic returns and so on and so on. So one of the uh, instrument uh, we do use is also the instrument that we encourage uh, in many ways uh, the uh, digital uh, uh, interaction uh, with uh, tax uh, uh, taxpayers. Thank you so much. And the very, very last question, because we have to wrap up, there's some more business that uh, Vera and the team, our colleagues from the OECD was, uh, would like to handle. How can corporations prepare for digitization ahead of standards being in place? And as you respond to this question, please just give also your, your parting remarks. I'll start with you, Dachi, this time. Uh, uh, so I think, uh, I think not only the corp uh, 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 not only the corporation are adopting uh, the new standards and new rules. Also, tax administration also are adopting how uh, corporations uh, uh, how uh, corporations are, are op operating. Because, for example, the natural system of taxpayers is uh, changing every day, and digitalization is the uh, as I would say the cost, constant uh, uh, journey because everything, the standards, the uh, uh, business models, the uh, natural systems uh, are, ch are, are changing. And uh, the, I think the 
main uh, main main aspect here is the uh, uh, the com uh, communication with uh, a corporation or with businesses uh, on the one one hand to share what is the what is the requirement from tax administration for them and also also to got the inform information what are uh, what are their, their business model what are their natural system in order to uh, to to try uh, to incorporate uh, them in in our our system and to make the compliance easier bo by both sides. Thank you, thank you so much, Dutch, indeed. Hank? Yes, thank you very much. Again, in terms of preparation, I believe that it's critical one for us to get the support of government, of our political leaders to ensure that they're on board and to have the support of the ministry, which we would have had in our case in terms of tax policy, supporting the drive in terms of trans transformation. There has to be an assessment of the organization to see what is in place in terms of your infrastructure one and the necessary support human resource otherwise. And there has to be an identification of, of budgetary support to put the systems in place. And how is it that we're gonna maintain going forward? And critical to that process, there has to be an effective communication both internally and externally with our stakeholders. That process can be aware as you, as you put the infrastructure in place to put a new system. And Central to this, as we have found in our case, that there has to be a driver from the H from the human resource side. There has to be a lead in the organization who will be the person that will take this 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 for going forward. Starting first with the head of the organization, the head of the organization has to champion the cause and have the support to ensure that the system is put in place. And I would say, on behalf of Jamaica, we have been very pleased to be here today as well as to share our experience and we look forward to our continued support and participation initiatives like this and we stand ready to share our expertise and also to be able to benefit from the good work that has been done by the the ataf and by extension oecd and other support other organization thank you very much and thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen i really would like to thank everybody for their participation. Specifically, I'd like to thank you, Hank, and to thank you, Dachi, for sharing with us um, your experiences. Indeed, what is very clear is that uh, digitalization of the tax administration is really a win-win for everybody. We've seen that it increases efficiency in the tax administration. It increases transparency in, the, in terms of the all of government approach, and it increases compliance and convenience for the taxpayer. So basically it is a win-win for everybody. Unfortunately, we cannot take any more questions. We'll try and uh, Hank and uh, Dachi will try and answer those in the chat. And uh, thank you so much everybody for your participation and back to you, Vega, thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. And Dachi and Hank, this was very interesting and very useful. I wish we had another hour to keep talking about these topics. I'm sure that we could um, and use that hour very wisely. But we do have a few other FTA initiatives that developing countries uh, and tax administrations might find useful. Uh, and so we'd like to briefly mention those as well before we wrap up. So going back to sharing my presentation, we have uh, what we call the digital transformation maturity model. You can see the link to it uh, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, this was published in December at the same time and in the same place uh, as the uh, digitalization report that I mentioned. And as you may know, FTA maturity models aim to help tax administrations self-assess their current level of maturity and to facilitate strategy work. Uh, this model is based on the TA Tax Administration 3.0 vision, uh, which was published in, in December 2020, uh, which is a discussion paper suggesting how we can digitally transform tax administrations. And uh, the maturity model is already uh, used by over 35 administrations. It changes almost daily, uh, including many developing countries. So that may be a good help 
And I just wanted to show you, if I can manage to change to the next page, um, the pilot results. Some of the pilot countries are from, uh, sorry, uh, administrations are from developing countries. And you can see that the whole range from emerging via progressing to established, which is where we assume that most FDA members would be, through leading to aspirational is represented among the pilot uh, administrations. We can also see that it's interestingly, uh, some administrations rate or assess themselves as being emerging and progressing and established and leading at the same time in different areas of digital transformation. And I think this illustrates what was mentioned during the uh, in the chat during the uh, debate that uh, it's not the, uh, I also find it's not the case necessarily that developing countries administrations are less mature across uh, everything having to do with digitalization, but there may be areas that are quite, that have quite far to go while other areas are very advanced. And so it would be great if we could help administrations catch up so that the whole administration is very mature. Moving on then to a very interesting initiative where now I'm going to stop sharing because Oliver is going to take over and do a quick demo. Uh, the inventory of tax technology initiatives, which is actually still in its uh, prototype shape. So you'll only be allowed to see a prototype today, but uh, it's coming very soon. Over to you, Oliver. And um, thanks, thank you very much, Vegard. Uh, I'm just um, trying to see. Do you now see the, the inventory as being shared? Yep. Or the data management page? Because I can't see the screen. Sorry, I see a white screen at the moment. White page. Yeah. No, it's um, the okay. so thank you very much. Prototype. Thank you very much, Vega. So I'm happy to present to you the prototype of um, the inventory of tech technology initiatives, um, or ITI, as we have uh, started calling it. This has been developed over the past few months, and it is based on a comprehensive survey that to date has been uh, completed by 71 administrations um, that uh, you can see here as an overview. Um, it's uh, probably good to point out that at that stage, um, um, it's a prototype, so it's still under development, and we are updating the database uh, constantly to include new countries as they come in, review information, um, and improve the look and feel of the pages. And we do plan to make that inventory uh, public in the week of um, 7 March. Um, so what is this about? Um, why is this international um, comparative data on tax administration, for example, collected through the ISORA survey? There's also um, not much out there um, that examines in detail the digitalization and digital transformation of um, tax administrations. And so in order to try uh, and fill this information gap, we've developed a new inventory um, in partnership with the ADB, uh, uh, with ATAF, CARTA, SIAT, CREDAF, um, IMF, and IOTA. And um, so the primary purpose of um, this database is to assist tax administrations in their considerations of uh, possible domestic reforms, as well as helping them to identify where future collaboration with um, other partners um, um, may be possible and add most value for them in the area of uh, digitalization. So the inventory um, seeks to achieve this by looking at leading technology tools and digital um, solutions implemented by tax administrations and um, in addition to providing a, a snapshot and overview um, of um, tools used and implemented by uh, tax administrations, we are also trying to over time include um, case studies um, that provide um, a more detailed look um, at uh, particular um, um, solutions. Um, once um, public, um, the inventory can be accessed um, through um, uh, five uh, web pages following the building blocks of digitalization, that's digital identity, taxpayer touch points, data management, tax rule management application, strategy governments, and new skills, as well 
as on the other side, you can see that um, um, via text type pages. So we also have dedicated pages for PIT, CIT, and VAT. And so, um, as I said, this is a prototype. So maybe um, um, I will try to show you um, briefly uh, one of the pages on uh, data management. So I'm just um, stop sharing um, to now go to my other screen. And I hope I hope that works. Wigert can probably confirm. Yep. So I hope you see now the page on data management. And so each of those uh, pages starts the same way. There is a description um, up front of what um, data management covers. Um, and that is then followed by a, a overview a global map that for selected indicators shows the, admin, um, shows, um, the solutions implemented by tax administrations. You can change that. For example, you can see then which administrations use analytics for real-time fraud detection and prevention. Or as you can see here now, um, and um, when you scroll down the next page or the next part of the page is probably the most interesting one for our analysts. This is um, the actual data tables where you have the whole um, 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 collection of um, all the responses received from the administrations that can be downloaded here um, on this uh, as, uh, on, on the right hand side, you can see downloaded in Excel tables that then can be uh, um, used and analyzed by, by, by tax administration officials or the general public, as I said, that will be um, um, in the public domain. What follows is a, a list of case studies. We've already included a few that we have gathered through other work in the OECD, but we are trying to expand that over time. Similarly, at the very bottom, you see there will be further information in relation to each of those uh, building blocks of tax administration and uh, also the tax types, everything that we have um, at the OECD and all of the partner um, uh, uh, partners we are working with um, that is related to digitalization will be made public here so it becomes a real repository um, um, for digitalization solutions so um, i think that was it in a nutshell uh, Vegard, i um, stop sharing and um, hand over back to you thanks very much oliver uh, we are actually uh, at the end of our time but i'm taking a chance that uh, you might have time to stay for another couple of minutes because we do have one other initiative that we would like to mention. Uh, you may be familiar with the Tax Inspectors Without Borders uh, initiative, which is UNDP OECD collaboration. We are looking into creating a new program for upstream management level confidential advice on strategic topics within the digitalization of tax administrations. Uh, and so we're currently running pilots on this to see if the concept is necessary and realistic, and we'll see where that goes. If you're interested in hearing more about this, then I'll be happy to tell you more about it uh, if you just send an email to sba.org. And I also want to mention how the four elements that we have talked about today work together could work together, that uh, an administration can start with a self-assessment based on the now available digital transformation maturity model, and then use the inventory of tax technology initiatives, which is going to be launched on 7th of March, approximately, as Oliver mentioned. Thank you very much for that, Oli. Uh, to examine which options are available and which options are used around the world, and then hopefully the report on supporting the digitalization of developing country tax administrations could be used to determine which strategy uh, would work for this in this unique case and to help implement it. And possibly there will be areas where this administration might seek peer-to-peer -peer assistance, for instance, through the Tax Inspectors Without Border ETA uh, yeah, program if that actually becomes uh, uh, a program and not just pilots. So these things will work well together, but this is just the summary of the FTA offerings. Obviously, FTA is there to work in collaboration and in concert with the large international programs, for instance, from IMF and uh, 
World Bank and all the excellent work from the um, uh, domestic uh, uh, support organizations like uh, from the UK, from Sweden, from Norway, etc. So that all together, this can be a good support solution for uh, uh, the uh, countries. I briefly want to also say thank you very much for the financial support that is uh, that makes it possible to for FTA to work on uh, capacity development. And please uh, feel free to contact FTA at the OECD.org uh, for more information on the topics that we have touched on today. I'm going to stop sharing. I know that there are a few questions, uh, sorry, a few hands in the chat. Uh, I'm and we are on over time, so I'm not sure if our moderator will allow us to uh, talk on those or if we should uh, wrap it up. So I'm going to give a chance to uh, uh, our moderator, Alba, to uh, inform us on that point. Yeah, it was sorry. Bit, uh, sorry, now my, it's easier to hear. Thank my you. mic was up. Um, yeah, uh, we had let the interpreters know, so uh, we can stay for a couple more minutes, so we can take one or two questions. Thank you very much. I noticed that uh, if I pronounce the name correctly, Vero Hasina um, you've had your hand up for a very long time, so we should give you a chance to state your question. And I can't see that uh, this person is uh, unmuting, so maybe that was uh, by mistake. Um, Alexandre de Almeida also has her hand up. Uh, do you have a question that you would like to state if you unmute? Um, it doesn't seem to be case, but uh, Veronica Vasquez, uh, uh, you just raised your hand, I understand. Do you have a question? I can't see uh, if there are any uh, people unmuting themselves, so we will assume that. Uh, there are no more questions. I want to say thank you very much, especially to our panelists and to Oliver, but also a thank you to all you who suffered through our more than one hour of uh, talking about tax and digitalization. As you probably understand, I find it absolutely amazing and uh, exciting. And uh, apart from the digitalization issues in the beginning, for which I apologize. I hope and believe that we have all benefited from this session. So thank you for participating and have a wonderful day, afternoon, and